Okay, so the goal of today is to bring some logs out of Kubernetes and get them into CoreLogix. And we're going to use the Open Telemetry Collector for this. Uh, Open Telemetry is a wonderful initiative providing a shared language across many different observability platforms that everybody agrees to. Um, it's a wonderful open uh, specification and standard. It simply means that um, we can all start to share uh, metrics, logs, traces, and bring them all into one place and really get some uh, cross data, cross functional uh, analysis of all this observability data that we, we, we typically silo off ourselves. Um, at CoreLogix, we're big, big supporters of this, both in open source contributions, but also um, uh, we integrate fully with this. So we integrate logs, metrics, and traces. Today, we're gonna focus on logs uh, and there are gonna be some other videos on metrics and traces. So um, before we pull out any logs or start to install anything, and we should just inspect the cluster that we've got. So um, we've got a terminal here. If I just get the pods and I do it in all namespaces, we can see that I've got Jenkins that's restarted a few times. Um, an instance of my app. My app is just a Docker image that I found on, on Docker Hub. Just prints out random log lines at different severities. It's like it's like 10 lines of bash and it's got over a million downloads. So it just shows it doesn't need to be a complicated application to become popular. The rest of the pods are just cube system, you know, the internals of Kubernetes. So, um, and you can see behind it as well, by the way, that I have an empty CoreLogix account, no data whatsoever. So we'll need to begin by installing the Open Telemetry Collector. Um, I'm gonna use Helm for this because I find Helm and Kubernetes work quite well together, um, but you can use, there's a, there's a bunch of different ways to install the collector, just pick the one that works for you. Um, so step one for me is just to list uh, the repositories I've got. I can see the open telemetry repository I've already added to my list. So if I do helm search repo open telemetry, uh, we can see that I have uh, collect the demo and the operator. The operator is super cool. We'll definitely do some videos on that in the future. For now, we'll focus on the collector. Um, so the way to install the collector is the way to install anything with helm is helm install uh, I will put my open telemetry. I'll tie it with some scripts I've got later and the name of the chart. So it's Helm install, the name of the Helm installation, and then the name of the chart. Um, Helm, uh, the open telemetry chart also requires you to set something when you install it. So you can use the set switch for that um, mode. So you can install this Helm chart in two different ways, either as a deployment or as a daemon set. As a deployment, it will just be a collection of pods. You bring information to it and it'll forward it on and process it in all the ways that it does. And um, the other option is as a daemon set where it will, um, it will work on different, um, uh, different it'll, it'll run on each node. Running on each node is far more convenient for us um, because we're collecting logs. Um, so I'm just gonna kick that off and with a bit of a walk. Um, there we go, so that's run. So if I do QCT, I'll get pod now. Uh, we can see that I have one ready pod, lovely. So at this stage, we need to integrate this with CoreLogix. Um, so how do we do that? Um, really straightforward, uh, we should start by looking at the documentation. So you can look on the CoreLogix site, but we also have documentation right here in the Open Telemetry repository. So you go to the Open Telemetry uh, organization and then the Open Telemetry Collector Contrib repository. In that is a folder called Exporter, and in there is CoreLogix Exporter. You'll see in the Exporter folder there's a whole um, there's a whole bunch of different features and functionality that. Um, that work for you there, but um, and you see lots and lots of different um, solutions. We're right here, CoreLogix Exporter, so we go into here, and you can see some example configuration. This is basically what we're gonna do. We're just gonna get rid of the traces and metrics part and just keep the logs part, but you can see how simple it is to add traces and metrics if you want. Um, so to add traces and metrics, what we'll do is um, I have already put together some functionality in here. So this config, is very, very similar to what you can see in the website. Um, I just simplified it a little bit and it just saves you having to watch me mess around and indent YAML files. Um, so from the top, I've added some extra stuff. Kubernetes attributes, so this will add some Kubernetes metadata to all of our logs. Um, things like restart count, uh, namespace, pod name, container name, and so on. Useful contextual information, really important to get that in actually. Um, and logs collection will actually enable the uh, open telemetry collector to actually start pulling logs from the containers automatically. This is an important one, include collector logs. This stops the sort of infinite loop of the collector produces logs, 
and then it reads its own logs and sends them to CoreLogix, and then it produces a log to say, hey, I just sent some logs, and it reads that log, and it gets in a bit of an infinite loop. Um, then we have the configuration for CoreLogix, so we set the logs endpoint to the hotel logs CoreLogix .com 443. Um, this will vary depending on your region, so make sure you cross-reference that. Um, we have a table in the, in the website. Um, and then we have your private key, which we'll show you how to get in a minute. Application name and subsystem name, if you're not aware of these, um, they are methods for correlating your data across logs, metrics, and traces. Um, so you can everything has an application name and a subsystem name. And finally, the timeout, uh, which is 30 seconds. Obviously, it's a de decent idea to set timeouts to make sure that things like thread locks don't happen. You're not consuming uh, resources you don't need to. You also see this mode daemon sets. This means when we upgrade this, we won't have to actually manually set um, the... Uh, we won't actually have to manually set the, the, the command and the switch. So this is always nice. So uh, how do we do this? Uh, well, first I need to get a hold of my private key. So the way to do that um, is to go to your CoreLogix UI um, and you'll see when you've got no data, you've got these lovely start sending data buttons. Um, so I'll just click on the logs one and that will load the tutorials page. In the top right of the tutorials page, you can see the private key. So you copy that and you just paste it. I will obviously do this off screen so you don't see my private key. Um, and then we'll bring in the terminal again. So I'm in the same folder as that. Um, I've written this script, upgrade hotel, just to make my life easier. It is a one line um, command, uh, one line script that uh, upgrades the open telemetry, my open telemetry uh, release with this Helm chart as before. But this time we have this dash F values.yaml and that will install using the, um, the values file. So I can just run upgrade hotel um, cool, so now that's running. Um, I can do so get pods, and we can see that already the collector agent has kicked up. Now, if I run K9s, which is my favorite Kubernetes tool, strongly recommended if you uh, use Kubernetes a lot, um, I can see my collector agent here, and I can see that it is already um, exporting some stuff, which is nice, it's very, very cool. Um, so if I can escape out of that, um, that means that logs are now moving from our um, cluster all the way to our uh, application. And you can see the kind of logs that are being generated. So if we uh, look at the my app one, for example, so we'll open K9s again, uh, and I'll pick this guy here. You can see that this thing is just generating some simple logs. Um, nothing particularly sophisticated, um, but just Nice and easy, just uh, demo logs that we can use. So when you want to validate that logs are arriving at CoreLogix, the very best way to do it, in my opinion, is to um, use uh, the live tail feature. So what makes CoreLogix different is that we have this fundamental architectural difference called Streamer. Streamer is all about um, capturing data quickly, analyzing it, processing it, triggering alerts, updating metrics, updating monitoring dashboards, and then at the very end, indexing and storing. Um, and we analyze in stream. So the point is, is that rather than all these expensive storage operations where you constantly throw things around and you're constantly storing information in all sorts of different places and transforming it in many different ways, which is very expensive, high overhead, but also um, very complex and very difficult to scale. Instead of doing all of that, you simply um, ingest and reuse combination of Kubernetes and Kafka streams and that together has made the streamer architecture um, that makes for a very very fast uh, experience so if I hit start now you can see live tail <clears throat> live tail tells you the second the logs are hitting the system it's very very low latency stuff um, so you can see the logs are, are flowing now which is really great um, and actually if I go to my explore page I can see a bunch of logs so before there was nothing and now we've got a bunch of um, logs and we can even see the application subsystem settings that we put in that configuration file, which is really, really cool. So it's just a really quick, easy example of how you can pull logs out of OpenTelemetry and get them straight away into CoreLogix.